So welcome to the session. This is Bhaskar from Pharma Growth Hub. Today we are going to talk about quality by design or QBD. Specifically, we will try to understand some of the important common terms used to understand the quality by design approach. Now the QBD approach is already been explained by the ICH guideline Q8 and uh, the ICH guideline Q14 talks about a QBD approach. So it becomes very important, necessary to understand the quality by design approach and some of the important terms associated with the QBD. So what is the reason that the authority or ICH has proposed the quality by design approach? Now there are two important reasons for that. The first one is to move from quality by taste to quality by design. What this mean? I mean the quality of the product cannot be achieved just by conducting more amount of testing. It can only be achieved by the proper design and that's the importance of moving from quality by taste to quality by design. You can design the process in a such a way that the quality will get achieved by the process itself and not dependent on to the, the amount of testing conducted. Second important point why quality by design to move from compliance based approach to knowledge based approach. I am conducting dissolution as it is a part of the monograph. Now this is a compliance based approach. But why I should conduct a dissolution? And why these are the requirement resolution parameter? This is called as a knowledge based approach. Now which approach is beneficial? It is going to be a knowledge based approach. Because knowledge based approach helps in defining the critical quality attributes of the product onto the scientific rationals. But compliance based approach may not actually help you to define the quality critical attributes based on to the scientific rationals. Okay, let us now talk about uh, what is meant by exact QBD. And here is the definition of the quality by design given in the ICH guideline Q8. A systematic approach to development that begins with predefined objective. Now this predefined objective is very important because this is going to connect you with a term called as a QTPP. We'll talk about the term QTPP very soon. So there is a need to begin the development with the predefined approach, predefined objectives and emphasizes product and process understanding and process control based on sound science and quality risk management. So quality risk management is part of the ICH guideline Q9. So you have to conduct the quality risk management to understand what is the right process for this particular product. And once you understand those right processes, right materials, you are going to achieve the predefined objective. Now what is the predefined objective? The quality target product profile or QTPP is nothing but the predefined objectives. So let us take an example of QTPP for a simple product. The dosage form can be a quality target product profile. So what is the dosage form you want to develop? Like tablet or intravenous injections, etc. What is the dosage design? Is it a immediate release product or modified release product? I'm talking about the QTPP, quality target product profile. What is the dosage strength? Is it 10 mg or 20 mg? Now what is the shelf life of the product you wanted to have? 24 month or 36 month? Pharmacokinetics for the requirement like what is the Tmax requirement, Cmax or AUC requirements etc. What are the important quality attributes for the product like assay, dissolution, related substances, description, identification, it could be any. And what is the proposed content, I mean so what is the container closure system to be preferred like blister pack, 
or maybe a bottle pack like HDP with certain number of counts. So these are the examples of QTPP. So QTPP stands for your quality target product profile and this is based on to the predefined objectives. The predefined objectives is nothing but the QTPP. So this is at the beginning of your product development. So dosage form is a predefined objective. You need to have a product, a tablet as a product. You need to have a immediate release tablet. You need to have a 10 MG immediate release tablet. You need to develop a product with a 24th month shelf life, having the TMAX, CMAX, AOC comparable with your reference product in case if you are working for a generic product. So this all becomes your predefined objectives. These are the objectives on which you are going to work to develop a suitable product. And this is called as the QTPP. I hope you understand the QTPP. Let us now move on to the next point. How to achieve this predefined objective? Isn't it? We talked about the dosage form and strength, the shelf life and container closure systems. But how one can achieve this shelf life? How one can develop an immediate release tablet form? By establishing a relation between QTPP and something called as the CQA or critical quality attributes. Now I am going to introduce the another important terms as far as QBD is concerned and that is the CQA. That is called as the critical quality attributes. I mean the CQA is the subset or you can say the part of the quality attributes but uh, it has a sp some special recognition. It is not common like all quality attributes. It is the critical quality attributes of that particular product. Let us understand the difference between quality attributes and critical quality attributes with the some examples. And uh, here are the examples of quality attributes and critical quality attributes uh, on the screen. The quality attributes for a tablet example, physical parameters like appearance, color, odor, shape, friability, dimension. No, this becomes the first quality attributes. Identification is second. Assay, related substances, dissolution, content uniformity, etc. Now this can be your quality attributes. This can be your quality attributes. So you can think about whatever attributes or whatever parameters which are defined into a product specification that can be called as a quality attributes. Right, we have the release peak or shelf life specification and you know there are number of test parameters given. So they become your quality attributes. Now are these, are these all quality attributes critical for your product performance? Maybe or may not be. So what are those parameters which are really critical and they are called as the critical quality attributes. And for example, identification is critical quality attributes. Assay, related substances, content uniformity, dissolution, etc. Now they are called as a critical quality attributes. So based on to the product requirement, you can understand and identify what are the critical quality attributes. So the critical quality attributes are the subset of the quality attributes. They are part of the quality attributes. Hmm? I hope you understand the difference between quality attributes and critical quality attributes. So why these quality attributes and critical quality attributes are required? Because we need to establish the predefined objective or quality target product profile. And the, for understanding this quality target product profile or to achieve this QTPP, we need to understand the relation between the QTPP means what parameters we are defining as a objective and what is their relationship with the critical quality attributes. And these are the examples of critical quality attributes. So who impacts the critical quality attributes? Who impact on the CQA? Now there could be two parameters which can impact. Now how the product is going to get manufactured? By using the certain amount or certain materials. We call as a raw materials or excipient. And by using certain processes. So the material 
and process can certainly impact onto the critical quality attributes. The material and the process can certainly impact onto the critical quality attributes. You can think about even the uh, the machine that you are going to manufacture is also part of the material, isn't it? So you can think about the material is nothing but not only raw materials, but also what equipment that we are going to use. Now these are going to impact onto the CQA or critical quality attributes. So what are those important material? Uh, what are those important factors which can influence the CQA, the CPP and CMA? CPP stands for critical process parameters and CMA stands for critical material attributes. So the process and material is certainly going to impact onto the critical quality attributes. Your process can impact on dissolution and dissolution is nothing but your critical quality attributes. Your related substances can get impacted because of the uh, the material that you are going to use to start your manufacturing, isn't it? So your dissolution also can get impacted uh, due to the, the particle size of the API that you are going to use. That is the critical material attributes. So the critical process parameters and uh, critical material attributes are going to impact onto your CQA. Let us take some example of uh, critical process parameters and critical material attributes over here. But before we move on to the example, let us also understand that the critical process parameters are the subset of process parameters. They are what? They are subset of the process parameters. You may be having, let us say, 20 different process parameters. You know, starting from dispensing to sifting to blending to granulation to compression packaging but does all these process parameters critical may not be some of them are not that critical and some of them are seriously critical so there is difference between cpp and pp the cpp is the subset of a pp or process parameters let us take one example over here now and here is the process of let us say uh, manufacturing a tablet. So the process parameters are like blend uniformity is your process parameter. Understanding the potency of the blend is the process parameter. The particle size can be a process parameter like you are shifting the blend or excipient through a some mesh. Particle size distribution of API or blend become the critical process parameter. Bulk or tap density moisture content of the blend can become the process parameters cohesive adhesive property electrostatic uh, property etc now these are your process parameters like in process parameters for a product development or product manufacturing but does all they are critical process parameters some of them may or some of them may not so in this example i assume that the critical process parameters are blend uniformity and the potency of the blend because these particular parameters can certainly influence what CQA, critical quality attributes. And it is very important to understand and define what are your critical process parameters. The second influencing factor is the critical material attributes or CMA. Again, the CMA is the subset of material attributes. Now, what it mean? Material attributes are like particle size, particle size distribution, fines or oversize, bulk or tap density, cohesive adhesive properties, electrostatic properties, moisture content, etc. But are these all material attributes are critical material attributes? Some of them may be, some of them may not. And I assume that the particle size and particle size distribution is the critical material attributes. So we talked about um, what is mean by the QBD why QBD is required. We talked about what is meant by predefined objective. That is nothing but our QTPP. We understand that we need to, under, to, we need to understand the relationship between QTPP and CQA to achieve the predefined uh, objective. And we also discuss about what impacts the CQA. Then we talked about the critical product profile sorry the critical process uh, parameter and the critical material attributes actually impacts onto the cqa i hope you now understand
the important common terms associated with the quality by design.